Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is now Saturday, September 28th, 2019, a couple of days left in the month of September. Then we flip the calendar over to October, the last really serious month in the hurricane season in terms of impacts. We do have hurricanes that have happened in November, make no mistake about that, but October is typically the last of the three-month period, usually it's August, September, October, that we see the most activity. And as we head into October, we will have some areas to begin watching, and I will outline that as we move through today's fairly brief update. First on our stop, the University of Wisconsin site here, the Tropical Cyclone page from the uh, TC website that they have here, part of the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, and they, they do a really good job up there. So big, uh, big thanks to the folks at uh, University of Wisconsin. Um, in the Eastern Pacific, we have an invest area, which is likely to try to develop into a tropical storm and move along the Mexican coastline. We have Lorenzo out here, which a lot of people are going to be talking about, uh, especially over here in the northwestern portions of Europe, the British Isles to be specific, maybe down towards France, right? That's why I mentioned northwest Europe in terms of the mainland area. <clears throat> that has several days' worth of watching uh, ahead of us, uh, does Lorenzo. So no easy answers for that just yet, but we will address that in a moment. And then here in the western Pacific, uh, we have this tropical storm. I, I don't know if it's MeTag or MyTag. It's probably MeTag. And this will develop into a typhoon and probably a fairly strong typhoon. If we click on this, very interactive maps. I like them. Uh, this is going to head up uh, to the north and east here of Taiwan and eventually just offshore of China and up towards the Korean Peninsula into the Sea of Japan, maybe southern Japan, the Ryukyu Islands, etc. We talk about him a lot. Follow James Reynolds uh, on Twitter if you're not already, and uh, Earth Uncut TV, or just search James Reynolds. I'll pull up some tweets from him uh, probably starting Monday, and we'll see what he is doing as he goes down there to intercept <clears throat> the impacts from this tropical storm, soon to be typhoon, James puts GoPro cameras out like we do and captures stuff. I mean, he realizes that you can't be everywhere at once, and he does a good job with that. So we'll see what happens with this system. All right, let's get rid of that tab and move on, move on over to the Atlantic Basin. Good shot here of the Atlantic, the Western Hemisphere, uh, Eastern Pacific, all that included. Uh, and here's the disturbance, you know, quite a bit of thunderstorm activity, overall unsettled weather tangled up in and around Central America, just offshore into the Eastern Pacific, trying to develop a circulation, uh, heavy rain along parts of the coast here, uh, but really not much time over water for this to uh, become very strong, so the rain and the flooding from that will be the main threat. Remnants of Karen sitting right in here, for those of you keeping track of that still. Um, turns out this is not going to come back to Florida as a menacing hurricane some of the model data, you know, going back a week almost was suggesting that, but just goes to show you how things can change. Uh, sometimes the models will show development and it happens, and sometimes the models don't show development and it happens, and you just never know. The guidance even here in 2019, tropical cyclogenesis, the way these things form and get their birth all the way through their life cycles, you know, some are easier than others to predict. Lorenzo was very well advertised by the global models showing how favorable this part of the Atlantic Basin was uh, when the parent tropical wave that became Lorenzo moved off the African coast several days ago and now easily going to be the season's biggest ace producer, accumulated cyclone energy. And again, that's just the sports analogy way of saying that this is the high scoring player of the game. Right, so you get a basketball game, for example, and so and so, you know, the forward for whoever scored, you know, 36 points, and they had the the game high, whatever. So Lorenzo is going to do that. And in fact, the uh, accumulated cyclone energy score for today is a little bit over 101. So we're headed towards above normal for the ace. We're going to be above normal, it looks like, for the overall season, because, like I said, we still have October. 
And while we may not get much development through here any longer, make no mistake, there are tropical waves, pieces of energy, sitting over Africa that are going to make their way out over the Atlantic and seed this area going forward. And I still think we're going to get two or three more named storms, and at least two of those will become hurricanes, and one or two could become an intense hurricane. I don't think that is a stretch at all. And remember, my final tally is an ace of 150 plus or minus five points. That's what I think we'll end up with. We are at 101 today. All right, so looking ahead, uh, a different look of the European shot here, the ECMWF, the 12Z run. Uh, what are we looking at? Let me get the white chalk going. Here's the west coast of Africa over here. Uh, there's Ireland up here, the United Kingdom over here. There's France. Sorry, I included France as part of the United Kingdom. Just drawing too fast. <laughs> Here's the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. Uh, Newfoundland, just to give you an idea. Here's the north east coast of the u.s there's florida on around through south america and so forth all right so there's your geography now for the meteorology there's lorenzo uh remnants of karen somewhere in here just really hard to see i think right there maybe um and the rest of these you have surface high pressure areas these are isobars these are lines of equal pressure and then you see the heights in the atmosphere too and that's what these shadings, these colors are. So if you had like this burgundy color to this purple color, you know that would indicate very thick heights in the atmosphere, uh, like a topographic map. And when you see these colors that are lighter shades down here, these are lower heights or lower pressure in the atmosphere, like you have up here and all along in these northern latitudes. Higher pressure in the southern latitudes during the summer and lower pressures up in the northern latitudes that changes over time when you get these big highs that move down out of Canada but that's later for now you have generally high pressure over the tropics but embedded in there are these areas of lower pressure these tropical cyclones all right so that's your start point to the day uh, to the the model guidance this is the analysis this is Sunday morning and look you see right over the southeast big old ridge of high pressure parked over the southeast still uh, 48 hours out Monday morning Tuesday morning so at day three you notice a few things uh, still very strong ridging over the southeastern United States uh, I love it <laughs> it's great uh, and a very strong I mean euro showing 946 millibars still with Lorenzo uh, this could add this could get us close to that 150 you know, I don't know, that's a lot to say that it's going to get 49 more ace points, but um, it's going to really help. Lorenzo will. Uh, here are the Azores Islands, and we got to watch this area. And, of course, up here we do have uh, the British Isles, etc., right? So keep an eye on that as we go forward, all right? So that's day three. Here's day four. And you notice what's happening is Lorenzo is coming around this big area of high pressure out here. Now, there is still time for it to get close enough to this upper, this is a lot of energy in the atmosphere, and get pulled in and kind of pinned around. But as of now, the modeling is trying to suggest a track in this general direction over here. Between France, maybe, that's what the GFS is showing, possibly Ireland, possibly um, the United Kingdom. You, know, you think about London. It's tucked away in there, Dublin, Ireland, etc. Yeah, you guys need to be watching this as as well, uh, folks on the the French coastline there and inland, because this is going to be a big wind maker, more than anything, and and rain. But we'll talk about it in more detail if we have to. Right now, we're just watching. That's day four. This is day five. The ocean temperatures up here are colder, so it will transition from being a tropical cyclone into one that's kind of almost caught into the jet stream up here so there'll be a lot of translational energy coming in to wherever this ends up windy squally rainy you know and it'll be a big deal but it's the water temperatures are too cold to have a bona fide hurricane structurally speaking but you know what that is a label i talk about this from time to time that's a label that humans put on these things 
That is a scientific classification, hurricane, for people assuming, let's just pretend for a minute, that this just comes barreling right in uh, somewhere between Ireland and the uh, and the you know United Kingdom, and it's going to bring impacts. That's what you need to know. Whether or not it's oh it's a hurricane or it's a storm, a gale center, who cares? It's got the potential to bring power outages and heavy rain and rough surf along the ocean side of these areas. And we'll look at this closer if we have to, you know, especially starting Monday, because I think by Monday we'll be able to nail this down. Uh, my brother lives in London, and I did look at plane tickets uh, from RDU over here over to London, and <laughs> whew, uh, it's cheaper to fly to Japan or somewhere. My goodness. I was looking at American Airlines. That's who I have my account with, and whew, <laughs> trust me, you don't even want me to tell you. I couldn't believe it. So I think I'm going to ask my brother to go out. Hey, uh, Chris, take the day off and go down to the coast and take your boy with you and check it out for me. He can be my proxy. Uh, but for real, we'll talk about this later on if we have to. Right now, it's something to watch. Uh, and you notice, too, as we focus a lot on this, let's don't lose focus on, oh, look at that, a 1,007 millibar low tucked in over the Caribbean Sea, which... Who knows? In five days, that could be a lot stronger. I mean, we'll see. That is interesting, though, because this is the area that we have to watch this time of year. Uh, but it really doesn't show much. Um, so we'll see what happens. As I said, there are other systems that are going to be coming off Africa, and you can see those embedded in the pressure field here. And those will end up in this area. And I think after we get past the 10th of October, the anniversary there of Michael, through the end of the month, um, this area down here could really light up with two or three more systems. Uh, but for now, we have Lorenzo to watch and maybe something in the Caribbean, and that'll keep us busy enough. So real quick, looking overseas to the Met office here out of the UK, when we refer to the UK Met, the UK Met, well, that's this, the UK Met office. And they did a nice little animation here, a little movie, kind of explaining that Lorenzo is currently in the tropical Atlantic to the southwest of the Azores, and they explain that there are a lot of uncertainties. There's a lot of talk kind of, uh, you know, starting to um, be generated because of this. But, and it's really cool how they show this animation. I got to hand it to them. And, you know, shows you the overall pattern here that maybe, maybe as it heads towards the UK next week, there could be some impacts. Something to watch for, for sure. All right. So they're on top of it. We're on top of it. You guys on top of it over there across the big pond i'm sure uh again we look at this this is the guidance here this is a big sign you know that the uk uh, my brain's on england the ecmwf uh the uk met does do an, an mjo forecast i just keep showing you the the euro because it seems to be pretty reliable and instead of spending all day well let's see what this one says let's see what that one says i mean let's just focus on one of the most reliable and stick with that. So there we go. We're looking at the Euro, and again, the Madden-Julian Oscillation hanging out in Phase 1 all the way through the beginnings of mid-October. And yeah, I mean, I can't say it enough. That's when we need to be starting to watch things closer and closer, uh, probably still a week to 10 days away. All right, all right, so that's it. Um, nothing else really to talk about. That's good news, especially... You know, considering what we dodged there with Dorian in the United States, it could have been a lot worse. Um, and what they are still dealing with in the Bahamas and up on Ocracoke Island and in uh, Cape Hatteras south of there, right? We got lucky here in the U.S. so far. Will that luck continue? And, you know, elsewhere down in the Caribbean, we shall see. We got to get through October 1st. Uh, F I R S T, not like the first day of whatever. You know what I meant. We need to get through the month of October. And then we can say, whew, we made it. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I made it through this. That's good. Uh, you guys have a good one. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, I appreciate you tuning in from whatever device you happen to be doing so from. We will talk again some more tomorrow.